Hello everyone, in this video I am going to discuss about the core architecture of Angular platform. Angular is a framework which is built for single page client application and it uses uh, HTML and TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is a like superset of all the features JavaScript has and on top of that uh, something extra. So uh, Angular architecture is built with some fundamental powerful concepts and those concepts can be uh, categorized in five names. Uh, those are modules, components, directives, services and routing. I'm going to discuss uh, how they're glued together to build this very powerful architecture. Okay, so let's start with modules. You can think one application which uh, you're building and in that application there are few features. Now, uh, you can design your Angular application in a way that each feature can be separated as each modules of your Angular project. It can be uh, differently as well, for example, uh, two features in one module, one module can have only one feature, one module can have multiple features as well, but it will be a better design choice if you uh, divide your different modules uh, as, uh, as many features you have. So Angular uh, supports one or more modules in its uh, uh, base. So thing is that uh, at least you need one module to load the Angular application, which is app module, the parent module, the root module. You uh, load the Angular application and the root module will load. And then uh, there will be so many different features in your application and each feature can have a different module uh, for it. And then uh, from app module, from the root module, you will load multiple modules in it. So yeah, those, th th those things are like fundamental of modules, but one modules technically uh, will consist multiple components. Next, I'll discuss about the components, but mainly for a single module, the components uh, which are uh, like aggregating the feature uh, for that modules are actually uh, like uh, those are closed rela related capabilities. Uh, not like, for example, uh, one particular feature can have multiple capabilities. One particular feature needs multiple capabilities to fulfill its uh, operation. In that case, uh, those multiple capabilities can be represented by components. And then those components are glued together to a particular module. This way, like one module can have multiple components and another modules can, another module can have another multiple components. So this way, actually, the uh, parent module and their children components work together. Module also consists of uh, uh, directive service and routing as well. Uh, but yeah, let's discuss about them individually so you can understand what are the, their role in individual aspects. And when we understand each of them, then we can think, okay, each of them actually uh, are coupled together to uh, address a particular feature of the application. And that particular feature can be represented uh, by a single module. So each module can have one feature, one feature to build one feature, you need multiple components and other directive services and routings. So I'm uh, going to discuss each of them. So later on, you're going to understand further. Let's jump into the components part now. Now let's talk about component. Component can be thought of uh, as like, Capability wise, there is like application data and application logic will be there in your application. There are so many different capabilities and each capability will have application data and their logic to um, like operate on top of the application data. So uh, for those capabilities actually, 
you need a separate uh, individual view items so you can think okay you can think about this uh, about this view item which is representing a capability of your of your application feature and then each particular capability can have multiple data and logic so those are aggregated in one component so one component will have uh, a capability bounded uh, data and logic and that can be uh, also thought of as a, like a DOM uh, chain okay in your application so DOM chain actually what it means like there can be one or multiple DOM elements which are chained together to represent the data and uh, the logic uh, behind the manipulation of the capability and then all together this uh, information this uh, package can be called component so uh, previously as discussed like one module can have multiple components so this way like multiple capabilities and all together those capabilities can be uh, like uh, one capability can communicate with other capabilities and this way like uh, those different components can be uh, uh, can be interacting each other and in that way like it, it will it will create a feature of your application and that feature can be resided inside a module in this way uh, the component and modules are fulfilling the parent child communication here next i'll talk about directives directives are actually helping components to enhance its uh, elements feature uh, on the fly before loaded into the UI. What does it mean? Actually, uh, directives are kind of template which can be added to a DOM element of a component and that particular template will help the that particular DOM element to change itself before loaded into the view. Using directive, uh, we can add the extra enhancement between application data and the DOM element. Uh, for example, we can add the data binding feature with the DOM and it can be two types, uh, event binding or property binding. Event binding means uh, user can interact with that DOM element by giving user input or any interactions and that DOM element will capture that and then pass it to the component. So uh, for that we can use directives and that logic. So it will take the user in input, user interaction, user feedback and then move it to the component. So uh, directive can help uh, creating that event binding thing. Property binding could be uh, like whatever data or property we have, uh, we can like communicate from component to user interface or user interface to component. So both way, two way data binding also supports uh, in this case. So uh, this way actually directives are helping hand to the component. So the best advantage of having directive is uh, attaching some kind of logic to the uh, DOM element which can be performed on application data on the fly uh, before loaded into the uh, view. So that will be like uh, giving so much power to the DOM element itself. We can use pipe separated uh, uh, feature uh, in, uh, in Angular. So uh, there is like data uh, reference and then pipe and then uh, you can mention the directive and then and that way that particular data application data and then DOM uh, element will will be interacting using that directive. Next I'll talk about services. While discussing the component we already know that components are uh, handling the capabilities of a particular feature. Now there are multiple components and each component handles their data uh, and uh, the logic as per the capabilities. 
now if you uh, want to have some data and logic which are not particularly bounded to one capability but the the, the data and logic are shared with multiple capabilities in your uh, application feature so uh, in that case one particular component cannot have that data and uh, logic inside it so in that case we will introduce the service service will actually the it will share the data and logic uh, between the components and also it has a very important task for example uh, to fetch the data from the service side and there are like few operations which are not like uh, capabilities or uh, workflow oriented that is those are like shared uh, and global kind of features for example validating input users or like communicating between two different components so those times uh, uh, those time will I introduce the service and will take advantage of it so services also will help uh, uh, make the component lightweight because uh, we can uh, inject the service inside a component and now the components will be lightweight because it is not handling the uh, like outsider uh, api fetching from the server and also it will not handle the user input validation and and it won't uh, handle the like how what will be the logic to communicate with other uh, components and all those things those will be uh, residing inside a service and then service can be injected inside a component now service is injected inside a component so component is not that much coupled directly coupled with service but it will take advantage of the service so this way actually angular is using the dependency injection angular is very powerful with components and service bound next i'll talk about routing uh, routing actually is very uh, helpful uh, feature of angular architecture uh, why it is helpful because this uh, this actually gives us the navigation path between different uh, view and components and all those things uh, let me explain so uh, okay so there there are different uh, operations during your application flow for example you want to uh, uh, enter a url in your application and then you want to visit a particular segment of your application you want to click one particular segment and then you want to visit or bring back some ex uh, extra component into the view and if you click a back button or forward button in your application all those can be manipulated using the navigation path of routing and this is not only uh, like one routing flow will bind the one particular page in the view this is not like that it is more than that it is very powerful powerful in a way like uh, you have a, a like navigation path in your routing then uh, each navigation path can can define like what will be the uh, component behavior how many component uh, component loading behavior and also there will be like a very powerful feature called lazy load so for example you uh, type one particular url and then uh, based on that url uh, in your uh, routing logic it is written that okay this particular url represent this this uh, components and then you are loading the component and then you are certainly realize that okay few of the components are already loaded but one particular components are not there so only for that component you will lazy load the application uh, view and for that uh, particular component it will be uh, uh, it will be lightly uh, loaded application uh, based on your routing logic it determines like what states the current application require and if that states are uh, deserves a module to load and that module is not present then it will lazy load the module as well it is very powerful like for example in your application there are separately uh, different features and in, in from one feature you are jumping into the another feature and that another feature actually need another module which is not loaded in your application so based on your ang uh, angular routing uh, 
uh, like path based on that and also the logic uh, you have written uh, in your routing so based on that it can load the module lazily as well like for particularly that module it is not present so it will load that mainly routing will help uh, to navigate the application with uh, your components and modules and the feature wise like different viewpoints so those are the five important pillars of angle architecture now uh, there is a concept called decorator decorator uh, will carry the metadata and types for modules and components and services for example uh, one module uh, will have a decorator and the that decorator will carry the components uh, uh, metadata and type now this will actually help uh, while we we are loading the component into the view or we are uh, like the app angulars so angular uh, uh, engine will uh, load the component to the view it will take the metadata first and it will take like which type of it is it is its component and then what type of metadata it is how how to load it and all those information so uh, the decorators are actually uh, playing very uh, uh, role of uh, interactor like it, it is like in helping different uh, building blocks of the application uh, to glue together so today we have discussed the very important uh, like angular architecture concepts and how the pillars of angular architecture are bounded together and how what are the rare what are their individual roles and all those things hey uh Please do subscribe this channel and if you think this video helps a bit, please do like and share with your friends. I will closely follow all the comments uh, for each of the video. So please do write uh, anything in your mind, any comment, suggestion, feedback. Thank you so much.